And what's nice about it is you get this whole range of overtones. It's not just Would one. Put the, put the mic up so they get a really good feel for that. And so that's the first first thing I did, of course, was 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 uh, was strike it. Now with the bowls, what you can also do is not only strike it with that type of instrument, but strike it with this, which gives it a whole different. throughout your body. And then you could do this. It really gives overtones and undertones and Yeah, okay, put that so you can hear. Yeah, now you can say what what did you just say the overtones, right? Yes, overtones and undertones and it you really feel it in the body. Mm-hmm. And and that was the whole purpose. But see, whenever you feel something in the body or you're co-creating with an instrument, you want to make sure that there's a consciousness, since there is a consciousness aspect of it, that it is going to co-create and it's not going to uh, shatter or it's not going to distort mm -hmm. your own uh, divine grid within. All right. And uh, so it was uh, when I, I used my inner sense when I went to to the to a website mm -hmm. to look at them and I was there going yes no 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 mm -hmm. yes and then I went back again I would ask at least three times uh, whether the bowl was the right one for me and so that would be the first step would be to understand about the consciousness of sound mm -hmm. I like that now the next step in 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 sound healing would be to uh, not only Okay, you've gone and you've settled into a space of consciousness, okay. right? And um, and so you can you can then use the bowl to uh, let's say let's say a person isn't feeling well in a certain area. You can lie them down uh, near a bowl or bowls, or you can pass it over the area. All right. And what and the, I did feel that. Yeah. And what the sound does is, you know, sound will start everything vibrating. And, uh, and everything spinning. Mm -hmm. And with the consciousness aspect of creation with a sound instrument, then what you're doing is saying, let's, let is, let's shake all the, uh, the pattern and to allow it to go back into its perfected pattern. Right. Of course, it also depends on the, on the person you're working with that's not feeling well. If they, if they have a consciousness that they want to co-create, then, the, then there's going to be more of a chance for uh, something coming back into its wholeness, for what we would maybe call healing. Uh, not necessarily a cure, but, he but healing, because mm -hmm. healing, as you know, is on all levels. Uh, it could be emotional, it could be mental, uh, it could be um, physical. Uh, sometimes people will hear it and it will have such a profound effect on them that they'll start crying. And of course, when you release tears, that's a form of healing in itself. We do uh, energy body work together as a team and it works really great because Missy can bring the sound tones in and when we have, when she talks about breaking the pattern, many times we see the pattern as an energy block within your body. And it can be very solid, it can be very loose, it depends on how long it's mm -hmm. been there generally, how intense your thought process is, what all is involved with it emotionally and what's happening with you. One of the things we found when we have difficulty moving it is she'll use some form of a sound, whether it's her voice, whether it's a bowl, whether it's, it's a tuning fork. And what that does is it uses a sound vibration that shakes that then and starts to break it. So what you're doing is you're taking it from the, let's use the word dysfunctional or unhealthy aspect of the way that it's glued together. So it's not getting oxygen. It's the energy isn't flowing through it. It's losing life. And she breaks it up. And then now you have these particles, if you will, molecules of energy coming apart. Now they're getting oxygen through them. They're getting flow through them. So now they going back to where their intelligence is working again, they're living again, and now that's when, when she talks about the new pattern. It can now settle into the new pattern, done with the beautiful work of sound. That's right. So when you use the bowl, 
which is a, a wonderful instrument, the bowl is not doing the healing. The bowl is an instrument. It's, it's an instrument that's co-creating with you. And that's sometimes what we forget is that when we use sound instruments, it's not the instrument doing the healing. It's the consciousness within the, the client, within you, all connected with the bowl. It's sort of like the consciousness of all where it's, it's all these friends, the consciousness aspects that are playing. It's, it's a joyful dance, really. And um, I kind of think of it as a surgeon's tool. Mm -hmm. It's going into whatever it is you're working on and opening up and allowing the space so then the dance can come in. That's a good, good, good way of saying it because uh, a, a scalpel, and sometimes sound can be like a sound scalpel, mm -hmm. is, uh, is just a tool. It's not, it's not the scalpel that does the healing. Right. It's the consciousness that's co-creating with it or right. in, out in the world, maybe we'd say the consciousness directing it. And so uh, that's why in a way too, instead of concentrating always on the instrument I was using, I would develop the consciousness of myself and send it out on my own voice. Mm -hmm. And I would do different things with the voice. And, uh, and I'll demonstrate that it's kind of fun and you can practice. And, um, and but, it works. <clears throat> but, uh, uh, but say I'm, uh, let's say I'm using a bowl, I'll start out with just sort of like uh, uh, doing some sound. Um, and I might want to do, if there's a blockage, do some trilling or trying to get things moving. And if, if you'll do that one again, mm -hmm. see this as a drill going in <clears throat> and working at it. Or it actually could be like a plunger, you know, like when you have a stopped up toilet. Uh -huh. <laughs> Which you do frequently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then it's like... And actually that's good because it is stopped up. The mm -hmm. energy flow is stopped up and blocked. Right. And and, and you're putting pressure on it that... Uh, that uh, and 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 um, and if you find when you use certain sound tones that um, that you don't have a feeling that the block is getting through, then mm -hmm. you can actually go up in key or down in in key, and and I'll demonstrate that. It's another type of sound to use because different sounds will have a different frequency of. Um, in your hertz cycles, it will have a different uh, feel. It will have a different, actually, way of, of operating or dancing. And so I might use a sound tone of ah, 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 ah. and I will be listening. <clears throat> I'll be listening to the sound tones, and I might use just vowel sounds. Ah, as as I'm scanning someone's energy field or <clears throat> or their physical body, and kind of sense of feel, is the sound changing? Is it uh, stuck? Does it all of a sudden want to go off key, or does it come clear? 